give it up for Canning Rob, everyone. Hello. Woo. Yes, my name is Canning, as in the verb to can, as in peaches. That usually uh, really gets it in for people, because, you know, it's... It's hard being such a white bread looking girl. I mean, people think my name is gonna be Mia or Catherine or Caroline, and just because those are all the names of all my friends doesn't mean it has to be mine, so. Um, but, you know, when, when I introduce myself and I see how people react to my name, it's, it's kind of a moment of joy for me because it's like that meme of someone trying to like do math and put it together. They're like, I heard canning. Oh God, I haven't heard that word outside of, I don't know, mason jars? Um, so I must have misheard her. It must be Carol or Channing or Bill, something like that. So uh, usually they respond with, oh, like uh, Channing Tatum. And I'm like, you know, I love to be associated with Magic Mike. I think it uh, kind of ups my sex appeal. Uh, but then they try and give me suggestions on nicknames or shortenings of my name. So, jury's out on whether I'm going with can or name. <laughs> yeah. I actually had a professor in college that I had every semester for all four years, and he consistently called me Candice, uh, which was kind of baffling to me because he would see essays with my name written on them, and I'd get them back and I'd get A's on them, so I just imagined that at the end of every semester he'd go through his roster and be like, oh fuck, who is canning? I've never even heard of her. She's never even showed up to class. It, maybe it's not even a girl. Like, I, I have no fucking idea. I'll just give him an A. That'll be great. So, you know, the name confusion really was useful in that situation. Um, luckily, I have some amazing friends that have actually bothered to learn my name. One of whom is uh, named Kate, and she is an ex-child Broadway star who is now a financial reporter, so she just calls it a different type of lying. <laughs> Um, and she performs pretty infrequently now, but when she performs, she performs at 54 Below. Anybody familiar with 54 Below? Yeah, some little claps. All my friends have also been to 54 Below. Um, it's really great. It's like a dank basement, and you just listen to people scream, sing karaoke at you from musicals that you want to die from. Um, and you have to pay for $30 drinks. And at this moment, I'd like to thank all of my friends for coming to this said dank basement to watch me do my own little performance. Um, but, you know... Uh, I was seeing her perform at 54 Below last week, and of course she had her gaggle of girls come and support her. One of whom is named Rachel, who used to fuck my cousin. Um, uh, anyone else ever have to interact with someone who used to fuck a family member? Yeah. It's horrible. It is the worst kind of interaction, because you know that they're always going to say something wildly inappropriate in public and then relate it back to the family member, and Rachel is no exception. Uh, however, she also happens to be incredibly intelligent. She's a med student at Mount Sinai, which is really fantastic for her. Um, but whenever she comes to see uh, any of these performances, she takes the opportunity to do some research and likes to ask us all very personal questions, such as, do you think girth really affects you the day after a hookup? Or, you know, is length a consideration when going on a second date? Which are all questions that I'm willing to answer, and that's totally fine. However, you also have to remember that this person can enter back into your family at any moment, and now knows a ton of personal information about you. And I can just imagine myself sitting there, looking at Rachel, as she tells my family all of the places that I've had public sex over Thanksgiving turkey, and you know, it just puts a whole different meaning on the word stuffing. I just don't wanna, I just don't wanna do it. Um, but you know, I'm also at an age where uh, I'm about to turn 25 and lose my medical insurance, which is fantastic. So we take this opportunity to ask for free medical advice. Uh, my friend Caroline, goes up to Rachel and asks her, oh, well, you know, I'm seeing this guy from Tinder, we've hooked up a couple of times, but he keeps giving me strep throat, and I'm like, is it worth it to continue hooking up with this person if I have to get a Z pack the next day? Uh, the answer is no. But uh, Rachel's like, oh, 
well, Mount Sinai to the rescue. <laughs> you better tell that guy that if he's a carrier for strep, he could have a really serious heart condition and have a weakening of the heart. And I'm like, all right, Rachel, I understand the Good Samaritan side of you, but like, this, I'm pretty sure this is the kind of guy that does, is more concerned about coronavirus than being a carrier for strep. And so my friend Caroline goes, well, yeah, you know, I'll take that into consideration. Um, but, you know, he has a really massive dick, which really puts a hard spin on things. And uh, Rachel goes, oh, yeah, I only come vaginally from big dicks, too. Oh, Cammie, by the way, how's your cousin? <laughs> I'm like, thank you, Rachel. I know exactly what to talk about at Easter now. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. I've been Cannon Rob. <laughs>